Let Me Tell You a Story is a product of Carolina Storyteller. Starring Jonathan Phoenix. Written, produced, and directed by Jonathan Phoenix. Edited and recorded by Jonathan Phoenix. And horribly marketed by Jonathan Phoenix. Man, I gotta hire a staff. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Carolina Storyteller. And sub- subscribe to get exclusive content and all kinds of other neat stuff. We even have merchandise coming. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome back to the show, folks. This is Let Me Tell You a Story. I am Jonathan Phoenix. And I'm really glad to have you guys here. Hope you guys have had a great week. Got a great story for you. Have you ever been sleeping and you wake up the next day and you just feel tired as can be, like you just didn't really get any sleep? You know what those nights are like? You just you sleep for eight hours. You know you were asleep. But when you wake up, you feel like you've been working the 12-hour day and you just want to go right back to sleep. It's like the sleep did nothing for you. Well, now, it's just a possibility that had a rough night's sleep, maybe the, maybe you were tossing and turning, maybe you were being woken up by something throughout the night that you didn't realize, or maybe, just maybe, you had a visit from a hag, or a hag at your window, as they might say, let me tell you a story. As the story was told to me, back during times of plantations and horses and carriages and all that, a young man just happened to be a very hard worker. He was nice, gentle, very handsome. He just happened to become deathly ill. Now, before he was deathly ill, his friends always said that uh, he was just full of energy. Everything changed one day when he met a beautiful woman who was new in town. For some reason, they said he was just taken with her. She drew him in, and he just paid all of his attention to her. He walked and talked with her for hours, and even took him to his house to show her where he lived. It was the very next day that they started to notice he was becoming tired and lethargic, didn't have the energy to do what he normally did. The day after that, he was even worse, and on the third day, he couldn't even get out of bed. They called for the doctor, but the doctor couldn't figure out what was going on. When the doctor left, one of his friends noticed this very beautiful woman just happened to be standing right outside watching intently focused on what they were doing. That was when they had the first idea of what might be going on. They thought that maybe, just maybe, their friend had a hag come and visit him. See, his friends knew the legend. His friends knew that what a hag was, was a beautiful and alluring woman during the day. But at night, the hag would shed her skin so that she could slip underneath your door, crawl into your room, find you sleeping in your bed, and then drain your energy. Sometimes she would even use her magic powers to turn you into her steed and ride you through the night, using you as her own personal conveyance and of course she'd return you by morning to your bed but you would be worn and tired and beaten and then she would slip back out underneath before the sun rose and get back into her skin to protect her during the daytime her friends his friends sorry folks messed that one up his friends knew that there was one way to tell if it was a hag They had to find the hag's skin. Finding the hag's skin would prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that a hag was attacking him. 
then all they'd have to do was just stop the hag. You see, hags had to be back in their skin before the daylight came. If the hag came out in the daylight without its skin on, the sun would destroy it. So the first thing they did was they searched around his house that evening after he'd gone to bed. But they didn't find anything the first night. They weren't sure if maybe the hag had waited for a night. Or if maybe it wasn't a hag at all. Then one of their friends remembered something else. The friend remembered what he knew about hags. And that is that they are intelligent creatures. But they are also meticulous. And almost compulsive with their need to know things. In fact, it had been said that a hag could be tricked by spilling grains of rice on the floor or leaving a broom, forcing them to count every bristle or every grain of rice before being able to go back out and get in their skin. And if there was enough there to keep them counting all night long, They'd never make it to their prey, nor would they make it back outside to their skin, thus leading the hag straight to its death. So that night, as he was helping care for his friend who was bedridden, as everyone was leaving, before he shut the door, he went to both doors of the house. At one, he left the long bristled broom laying down in front of the door. Should anything come across, it would have to come across the broom. And as he walked out the front door, he took a bag of rice and spread it across the floor. Then he went back to his home and waited. At around one o'clock in the morning, he by himself went back to his friend's house could hear noise inside someone making a, making a ruckus and trying to count. He knew he'd caught the hag, but he knew if he disturbed her, his fate would be worse than his friends. Hags are more deadly when they're in danger and discovered than they are when they're just coming to prey on you at night. So he began searching around the house again. This time under the steps he found it, the hag's skin. So he took the skin with him, took it back home, and tossed it in the fire. The next morning when the man awoke, the first thing he did was he went to his friend's house. Outside, in front of the house, was a pile of dust as if something had burned and just kind of dropped right there. He could hear noises inside, so he opened up the door to find his friend. Using the broom that for some reason had been at his back door to clean up this mess of rice that was left on his floor, the friend explained to him that half of it was scattered out and the other half was neatly stacked in a pile. plan had worked. The hag had counted rice all the way until sunrise, and when the hag realized it was too late, they went out to find their skin, but their skin was already gone. This story of the hag was told to me when I was very young, and it has different interpretations. Sometimes the victim awakes with hooves, with horseshoes, I'm sorry, nailed to his hands because they had been hooves when the hag had transformed him. But the only way to beat the hag is still the same. It's such a prominent legend that it's actually why some people would put brooms next to their doors. Some don't even know why they do it. They just know that that is where the broom is supposed to go, by the door. And the reason the broom goes by the door is so the hag will stop and count the bristles and it won't come and ride you at night. It's an interesting legend, and when you think about it, it 
kind of plays on a whole lot of different things and different fears, doesn't it? It's a beautiful woman who's really something evil underneath. And she comes and she takes all of the energy of the young man. Tell me that doesn't have Judeo-Christian values in it. I don't know what does. And of course, because she comes and takes all the energy of the young man, she is evil. Because, let's face it, strange, beautiful women. They must be evil, right? You guys know I'm joking. Strange, beautiful women are not evil. But that was the mentality of the hag story. And this led to a lot of strange, beautiful women being accused of being hags. Especially if they became associated with someone who became sick. And believe it or not, back then it was really easy to get sick. Something like this could have led to a situation similar to the Salem Witch Trial, where women were accused, wrongfully imprisoned, and even killed for something that they had no control over, solely for being beautiful and around at the time. Well, friends, that's our story for this week, and I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you guys had a great time listening. I hope that you learned something about the history and the mysteriousness of the South. I hope you don't consider that all beautiful women may be hags underneath. But I also hope that you do consider that just perhaps, just maybe, if it so happens... As you are a young man out there and you find yourself waking up extremely tired. Perhaps it's because last night you had a hag at your window. And maybe the best thing you can do is make sure that uh, you set a little trap for him for in the morning. If you get a chance, please go to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Jonathan Phoenix. Support the podcast. Also, please like, subscribe, leave us a review, let us know how we're doing, and we will see you again very soon.